A practical application of Dalton's law is when we collect a gas over water in an experiment. For instance, in this lab, you can see in this test tube, we've got some potassium chlorate, and we're going to heat it with a Bunsen burner. And hopefully you remember, that makes some calcium chloride and some oxygen gas. Okay, What we're going to do is collect that oxygen by having it bubble through and up and into it collects up here. Okay, So it bubbles through the water and since it's lighter than water it collects up above here so we can collect our oxygen in a container. Now we don't just have oxygen in there even though it looks like in this picture. Every time you collect a gas over water you also have water vapor. So also present here is water vapor. So back to Dalton's law, the total pressure in that little space there is the partial pressure of the water vapor plus the partial pressure of the oxygen. And the trick is usually that we want to try to figure out just what the partial pressure of oxygen is. So you can see if you know the total pressure you could subtract the vapor pressure of water. Well, is, hard, is it hard to find the vapor pressure of water? Actually, no, it's quite easy. You can find it in tables. Okay, The vapor pressure of water is totally dependent upon the temperature in the room. So at 0 degrees, you've got 4.58 torr. At 40 degrees, you've got 55.3 torr. At 100 degrees, you've got 760 torr. Um, and it might not be obvious from the data table, but as you increase the temperature, the uh, vapor pressure gets larger, but not linearly. It gets larger exponentially. So you can see from this graph, as I increase the temperature, the vapor pressure increases more and more. Okay, so you get a nice exponential growth there. But the trick to this is anytime you want to find the vapor pressure of water, you just look in a table. Okay, and the tables are everywhere. So early in the year, we, we read the volume of a udiometer, or a gas collecting tube. You're very shortly going to do a lab where you do a reaction in a udiometer. Okay? What you're going to have is a, a rubber stopper here, and you're going to put a little coil of magnesium. That's probably not a great color. Let's see if we can get you a better color there. There's going to be a coil of magnesium here. And in here, there's going to be some hydrochloric acid. So the hydrochloric acid, we'll show you the setup later, but the magnesium chloride, I'm sorry, the magnesium reacts with the hydrochloric acid in a single replacement reaction to make magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. Okay, so what happens is the hydrogen gas bubbles up here and up here you've got some hydrogen gas okay but we don't just have hydrogen gas right what else do we have we have water vapor so there's hydrogen gas there and there's water vapor so if we can figure out the total pressure inside this tube we'll know it's equal to the pressure of the hydrogen plus the pressure of the water okay this comes from the table, and we can figure this out. That is, if we know the total pressure, but how can we figure out the total pressure inside this tube? Well, it's actually easier than it looks. So let's say we have this picture right here. This is the atmospheric pressure pushing down on the water, okay? And it's trying to push the water up the tube and the pressure of the gas plus the water vapor are trying to press down. In this picture right here, those two things are not equal. Okay, The pressure of the atmosphere is equal to the pressure of the gas plus the pressure of the water plus the height of that column. Okay, So that's really no good to us. What we have to do is we have to take our udiometer and make this level right here equal to the water level. So the level of the gas in here, we have to make it equal to the water level.
because now in this picture these two pressures are equal. The atmospheric pressure is exactly equal to the pressure of say our hydrogen gas plus the pressure of the water vapor. Okay, So now this comes from reading a barometer which we'll have so we can figure out the pressure in the room. This comes from the table and that will allow us to solve for the pressure of the hydrogen gas. Um, and you'll see how this all plays out in a lab very shortly.